on cornerofthegalaxy.com. It's time for another episode of Corner of the Galaxy from the Box, the show that gets you behind the scenes of the LA Galaxy and into the minds of soccer reporters and MLS experts. Your hosts for the day are Corner of the Galaxy's Josh Gessman and LA Times soccer reporter Kevin Baxter. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy from the Box on cornerofthegalaxy.com, a special playoff edition. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Monday, October 17th, the LA Galaxy getting a 1-0 victory over Nashville on Saturday afternoon, just barely Saturday afternoon, by the way. Uh, a wonderful game, a very comfortable game for the Galaxy. I think we're going to talk about a whole bunch about the game. We're going to focus on that. Galaxy know their matchup. They know they're playing LAFC. We knew that heading it in. We know the time. We're going to give you just some of those details as we get ready. And schedule change for Corner of the Galaxy, a live Wednesday show coming up. Sophie the Cannon, Nick Lau, myself, we will get you ready for El Trafico in the playoffs part two. All right. A lot to get to, a lot of fun things to talk about. To help me do all that, he's back here with us once again. It's Kevin, the Panda. Baxter, Kev, how you doing, buddy? Hey, we almost lost the listener tonight. We almost lost the listener? Are, are they okay? Yeah. Yeah, no, well, Larry, not on Twitter, Morgan. Now, and Larry, not in the stadium, Morgan. Okay, well. yes. Um, he was not going to, he told me, he messaged me and said he was not going to listen because he wanted to watch the Cleveland Yankees baseball game. But that's been rained out, so maybe he came over. By the way, you know that. Cleveland baseball team, they're, they're the Guardians now, right? Yes. So if you get traded from Cleveland to Anaheim in the middle of the season, does that make you a Guardian Angel? Oh, very good. What if somebody went from um, from the Guardians to the Galaxy? Does that make you the Guardian of the Galaxy? Guardians of the Galaxy. So, but that just, would be a tough... You'd have to switch sports. That's okay. Some of those guys can run fast, right? Kevin Cabral proves that if you run fast, you can play Major League Soccer, right? Is that, isn't that what he does? Yeah, well, he'd be a pinch runner. Hey, um, shout yes. out to Kevin Acevedo. Part of his job description. Uh, what? To what? No. All of a sudden, I think Kevin thinks he's a producer on this show. Like he's sending me notes <laughs> and stuff like that. Hey, Kevin, I know how to look up my own research. Thank you. I'm good. I'm good, buddy. Appreciate it. But yes. Could you, I mean, could you imagine you apply for that job and they go, oh, "Here's your job. You got to uh, compile the stats before the game and organize the interviews after the game, and you have to listen to Corner of the Galaxy." That would be like a deal breaker for me. Yeah, I would be out. I would be out. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't handle that. That was. Uh, that was too much. Um. Oh, very interesting. I know I know everybody's waiting for away tickets, too. You know, everybody had to go ahead and, and put in your away tickets. Again, seasoned podcaster Kevin Baxter leaves his phone next to the microphone. So whenever it vibrates, it shakes the whole thing. Everybody can hear you it. You know who, who it was? It was not. On, he's on not on Twitter, but he's but he's, he's listening on, to our show. Of course. Yes. Yeah, of course. He's Larry on, is. Uh, he's on email. Uh, of course he is. Um, fun night. I, I Fun night. Fun afternoon. I got home at like 3.30. I didn't know what to do with myself after a soccer game. Fun afternoon. Uh, LA Galaxy beating Nashville one to nothing. Um, I thought it was... I thought this was going to be a much more difficult game for the LA Galaxy, Kevin. And I'm going to say this because with hindsight, I, I certainly believe this is the case. I went back and watched some of the game again and watched some extended highlights, the whole deal. The Galaxy cruised through that game for the most part. There were a couple little scary spots the biggest one probably in the eighth minute with Jonathan Bond and the, and the botch clearance, right? That came right back down his throat and he had to end up making a save. He made one other really good save outside he of that. Five on the day, five on the day. That's, that's yeah, yeah. But three of them were like, here, let me toss you the ball, Kevin, catch it with your hands. I mean, there were, there were a couple of those that weren't real saves. Um, you know, it was more like they accidentally put a ball on target and they hit it right to him. So, um, I think he would agree with that too. Um, we, we talked to him after the game as well, but, uh, something totally surprising happened in this game that I didn't think was going to happen. One is uh, that the Galaxy locked down Mukhtar, uh, and we'll talk how much they locked down Mukhtar. Uh, he's going to be the MVP as far as I can tell. 
Um, and and he's he already just, the Golden Boot winner. Yeah, and he's and he's gonna get and he got bounced by the playoff, and and, and Martin uh, Caceres put his uh, put him in his little pocket um, for that game. Uh, I thought it was uh, it, it was unbelievable. The Galaxy became a defensive team. They out defensed the defensive team, and to me, Nashville was going to be really hard to break down in the final third. That ended up not really being the case. The Galaxy actually put two balls into the back of the net off of Nashville, right? Um, the first one was was disallowed by a very soft VAR call, in my opinion. I don't know if it was a foul. I know lots of people said, well, that's clear and obvious. Some of those MLS talking heads, they get their East Coast bias all twisted up, and they can't see straight whenever things actually happen, where if you watch the whole game and the way the game is called throughout the entire match, you see that that's not a foul in the context of the match. But yet VAR was like, hey, pull this back because you need to take a look at it. This is where VAR gets it wrong, in my opinion, Kevin, because the referee saw that foul. He saw it, and he was like, I'm not going to call that because I haven't been calling those types of fouls in this game. And if you watched, it was definitely playoff soccer, a lot of fouls. The Galaxy did most of the fouling, by the way. Um, and you don't make those. T- he wasn't making those types of calls. So in the context of the game, that was not a foul. Um, if you want to say it's a regular season foul, and maybe Villarreal, Armando Villarreal, the, the referee, maybe he was the guy who, who would, would have called that foul in a regular season game, but he saw it, and he chose not to. I thought Greg Vandy got it right whenever he said that's a 50-50 call, even in the best of cases, and in this case, you do it after the guy's already run 80 yards and put a great move on, and Chicharito buries one in the back of the net. Really interesting, and it's something I think we definitely would have focused on had it not been for Julian Araujo coming in and scoring the, the goal that ended up being the game winner. But it, it And was he an almost had time. another goal. He had that little cross into the box that, at the far post that almost went in. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's 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 crazy. Uh, what an impact. I thought the defense played on this whole thing, right? And I thought Julian Araujo... First clean sheet since July. That's that's crazy, too, because... I, and Jonathan Bond was talking about it. He goes, you know, we've been playing well down the stretch, but for whatever reason, we haven't been able to get those... Um, those clean sheets and being able to do those things, right? So it was, again, another growth in sort of the the LA Galaxy and what they were trying to do. Let's focus in on the on the lineup here real quick, and then we can talk some more about the game. Uh, LA Galaxy started exactly as you would expect them to start. Um, again, this is going to be the lineup as long as nobody's hurt um, for the rest of the playoffs for as long as the LA Galaxy lineup. It's going to be Grand Sear, Chicharito, and Costa up top. It's going to be Puj and Brugman and Delgado in the middle. Um, it's going to be Edwards and, and Caceres and, and uh, Koulibaly and Julian Araujo on the back line with Jonathan Bond in the, in, in the center of the, the box back there. That's going to be your lineup. That's how this is going to set up. How come Caceres' picture looks a little different from the rest? Probably because they had to like squeeze it in. Like him better? Yeah, yeah. I didn't set up the pictures. Okay. This right. is this is from the league. I just I just copy. It's because they they didn't have a picture of him in a galaxy uniform, so they used like a headshot that they got and squeezed. That's it in his there. driver's license picture. <laughs> it very well could be. It very well could be. I would also like to remind everybody. I am definitely on babysitting duty right now. So my wife is 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 in Vegas at a conference at a conference whatever. We'll we'll see what that actually ends up being. Yeah, I didn't yeah. actually see any receipts for that. that. Yeah, I know, right? So okay. she she's in Vegas on a conference. So I am watching said little one right now. Um, so should he wake up screaming and need me, it's going to be the Kevin Baxter show, which will definitely tank our listenership. <laughs> yeah, Even, yeah. Your wife's conferencing in, uh, on, at the Black Tech table right now. Yeah, Magic Mike uh, probably has her her attention right now. So, uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was really interesting to see uh, this this Galaxy lineup just sort of do what they did. I thought, and there's a couple things on the Nashville side. We heard that Gary Smith did not even make the trip, Kevin, right? That was that was what was announced at the beginning of the, uh, uh, whenever we got to the stadium, basically. And not really clear why. Illness, I think they said. And it right. was COVID probably, or maybe, it said, we don't know. They said not COVID, but you know not what, you, who knows what that really means. That means it's COVID. That's that mean, the, the it code. could be. It could be very well be. So Gary Smith was not there. So that was interesting. They don't have their head coach. What Their assistant coach, I think, was Steve Guppy. Great last yeah. name, Guppy. Um, that's not an intimidating last name at all. You want me to mark Guppy, right? Like that's that that doesn't work for me. But no, Steve Guppy was out there. I think, and I'm sure Gary Smith had input on this. I don't think this was a, a Steve Guppy decision that he was making on the fly. But Nashville went with five in the back. They put a midfield together that didn't have Dax McCarty, and I realize he hasn't been starting every single game. But in a playoff game where you're trying to mark. Uh, you know, somebody like Ricky Pouge or Gaston Brugman, or you're going to have to handle Mark Delgado in there. 
you don't have somebody like Dax McCarty, who's a smart guy to sort of put in there. And instead, you put two forwards up top with Bunbury, who did drop back a little into the midfield. But for the most part, Bunbury got put in Sega Koulibaly's pocket. Um, there were two there were two players in Galaxy Defender pockets. Uh, Caceres had Mukhtar, and Bunbury was in Sega, Sega's pocket. So between those two guys, Nashville didn't have any offense. The the official stat, and this was for uh, Joe Lowry, who was was following this. He said he was analyzing uh, the playoff game, and the LA Galaxy only let Hanny Mukhtar touch the ball three times in Zone 14. That's a little like inside baseball for people who don't pay attention to zones and understand what it means. It's just how they mark out the zones on a soccer field, and the highest number of chances, if I remember correctly, sort of come from 14 and 17. 17 is inside the box. 14 is the zone that's in the center of the field, just outside the top of the box. But that's where your forwards usually receive a lot of balls is in 14 and 17. And so if you don't let Nashville build up, especially through the middle or, or into zones 13, 14 or 15, which are sort of just outside the box and stretch across the field. Um, if you don't let that happen, they don't get touches in these zones. And 14 is sort of probably where Hanny Mukhtar made most of his, his money this year uh, with the golden boot and everything else. So the fact that the Galaxy were able to den- deny service to Mukhtar in that was probably the surprise of the game for me. Again, the defensive side of things, Kevin, not so much the offense. The midfield had a part of it. But for me, the defensive growth in this game alone showed a huge step forward for me. Well, this was Nashville's kind of game. As you said, the Galaxy were comfortable, but this was a Nashville game, a one to nothing game, a few shots on goal, you know, real defensive struggle. This was a game that Nashville should have been comfortable with in the Galaxy, maybe not so much, but it was the Galaxy that looked better. And it's interesting. I think this is Caceres, was Caceres' sixth game, if I'm not wrong, I'm mistaken. Yeah, I think it was. Um, yeah, it's fewer, fewer than, than Pooj and, and, and Bergman for sure. You know, Bergman also is, is making that defense a lot better. Uh, uh, sharper. Yes. But my point was going to be everyone's focusing on how Ricky has changed the offense and how Chicharito and he have this chemistry and he's scoring a lot of goals and, and setting up, uh, you know, Chicharito scoring a lot of goals. Ricky's setting them up. Everyone's focusing on what's going to happen, happening going forward. But Caceres and Bergman have really changed this team defensively. It's a team that can, as they did this week, can win with defense. And you know, I think they're when going forward, you know, we're going to you're going to talk about the LAFC, LAFC game on Wednesday. But just going forward into that, yes, they've met three times this year. This is a totally different team. Um, it, it's it's got different personality. It has a different style. It plays a different way. It wins in different uh, ways. Uh, it's a totally different team. And it's different defensively and offensively, which is interesting because when a lot of teams change their personality, it's one way or the other. They become more offensive. They become more. The Galaxy have changed on both sides of the ball. Yeah. And, and for for, uh, you know, for Caceres, it was sort of one of those things, those added things, Kevin, that I don't think anybody really expected. Right. Because because it was sort of it was the last signing in a window that saw Bergman come in right away. And then Ricky Pouge was the big splash. And then they got Caceres and it sort of came in under the, oh, okay, well, this is a guy who's going to go probably to the World Cup and play for Uruguay. Why Why wouldn't he, right? The whole deal. And we have some salary releases too. He's making, what, $300,000, a little under that, two ninety seven yeah, or something I, like that? Yeah, just under 300000 And uh, he signed through the end of this year and then he has an option. My, my feeling coming in, and you and I talked about this for the show, is that uh, he was not playing. Uh, he was on a club in Spain. He was not playing. Um, he really had nowhere to go. He wants to play in the World Cup. This would be his fourth World Cup. He's 35. This would be his fourth World Cup. I mean, you you do not generally get center backs that have played in three World Cups on a team like Uruguay, which is a good team. You know, went to the quarterfinals with him on there. You, those guys do not fall into your lap uh, generally, and and he did. Why? Because he's motivated to be a fit going into the World Cup. He had to play somewhere. Um, the Galaxy accepted him. You and I were talking before the show. I'm wondering if he is going to come back for his his option year because he'll be 36 and he's already played in the world cup. He's not going to stick around for four more years. Right. You seem to think that he's very happy here uh, and that things are going well, that he may come back and, and finish out the option, play one more year here. Yeah, I, I, I do. I mean, I, I think that there's definitely within the cards and be able to do that. I don't think Greg Vanny loves somebody like Derek Williams. And you can certainly see it was funny because uh, there was a nationally televised game, maybe in the middle of the season somewhere. And I was sort of kicking around some stuff with some some national announcers and going back and forth on some stuff. And we were talking about who we ranked higher on the defense. And I'm like, well, I like Williams better than I like Koulibaly, right? And Koulibaly was in his midseason sort of, uh, and the Galaxy were in their midseason blah as well. 
And I was sitting there going, you know, I think that Williams is probably the better defender, you know, whenever you get hands down. And ever since I said that, and by the way, it was sort of agreed on with with whoever I was talking to. They're like, yeah, I thought it was Williams, too. And I think, Kevin, if we talk about it at the beginning of this, we expected Williams to be the center back that was going to anchor and going to be the better guy than Sega Koulibaly, right? Well, who was your defender of the year? Who did you vote for? Uh, who did I vote for? Defender of the year? Oh, Sega Koulibaly. Yeah. So did I. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's kind of what you're where you're going. It's like at the beginning of the year, he wasn't all that great. And now he's a guy that we both agree is the defender of the year for the galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, he's clearly become that, but it's funny how that changes and how that rolls. And now you have Sega being the guy who he is, who's definitely going to be here next year, right? You, you lock that in, you make that happen. I forget if he's, if his contract is up and he has an option, I'm pretty sure Williams contract is up and there is an option on his. So you could move somebody like Derek Williams. You could bring in somebody like Costaris and you could go out and you can either bring in somebody like a Jalen Neal um, to sort of backfill and be the guy who's going to, who's going to fill in for those guys. Right. Or you can go out and find another center back that, maybe you wanted more than than maybe Derek Williams and 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 Costaris plays his last his last sort of you know um hurrah with the LA Galaxy for one more year I don't think that Martin is going to be an everyday guy at 35 or 36 he may have to miss some games you may expect that he's going to be out maybe 10 games or 12 games or that type of thing throughout the entire year maybe on rest um but they he hasn't had to play a whole bunch of back-to-backs Kevin where it's like you know short day rest where the Galaxy had to sort of fumble through the summer on a lot of that so I think there's some some chances for some movement on the center back line, but it's clear that Sega Koulibaly has sort of come in there and angered it. And then we saw basically the rebirth of Martin Caceres under an LA Galaxy crest um, in this playoff game because I thought he was man of the match for me. Um, 100% the man of the match. I thought him, uh, probably Sega for what they did with uh, with Bumbury. And then, you know, you can look at Julian Araujo and what he was able to do. Um, I thought he got burned a couple times defensively, but was very good offensively going forward a couple different times. Um, so he has that. Uh, I'm trying to think. Brugman was another really great, solid game. But again, the Galaxy relied on their defensive sort of stance and then used the possession that they've been using all year, Kevin, that has frustrated fans because they had didn't have a finishing product, but they used that possession to frustrate Nashville. Um, who was more than happy to sort of give the ball up and let the LA Galaxy, you know, dance around. And again, let's let's be very clear, at least in my mind, Kevin, I thought the Galaxy had an uneven first half. Um, I didn't think I thought Nashville did a good job of sort of uh, of pushing some buttons. And Vanny said that Nashville coming out with five in the back was a little bit of a different look than they expected. Um, and that they needed some adjustment through that. So I thought that was interesting. I thought Douglas Costa in the first half was kind of the reason that the Galaxy were uneven in the first half. I didn't love his positioning. I didn't love the solutions that he was trying to provide. And I think when we're paying attention to all of these things, it's easy to sort of uh, understand how much how much uh, Costa has an effect on this team just in his positioning and where he plays. If he plays in the position where he's supposed to, which is sort of tucked in on that right side or even on the right wing and letting uh, Araujo invert inside, you and I were sitting next to each other and we were talking about that a bunch. Um, I think he's good. Whenever you see him trying to like create too much on the edge of the box or trying to dance around or trying to make too many cuts or too many things and losing the ball, he tends to lose the ball in dangerous places that create counterattacks, right? And so Douglas Costa and the way he plays is super important to this LA Galaxy team. And if he plays well and in the right positioning where he still provides some defensive cover, the Galaxy play really, really well. And if he doesn't, um, and he gets a little frantic or he starts running around, you know, a little chicken with his head cut off because he has the ability to do that. He can wreck that formation, even with Ricky Pooge and even with Gaston Brugman. Delgado gets pulled out of position. Araujo gets pulled out of position by him. If he's not where he's supposed to be, uh, Douglas Costa, he causes a lot of problems. And I think he was having problems sort of finding that happy space. Or maybe Nashville was doing a j- good job of denying him that happy space in that first half. By the way, speaking of 30. 30- five-year-old Uruguayan World Cup players. I talked to Jovan about the Suarez rumors, and his first response was, we don't speak about uh, you know, players that aren't on the team. And I said, well, that's fine. I'm not asking you to speak about him. I just want to know, is this a rumor that I should follow? And he goes, well, we don't speak about players who are not on the team. And again, it's like, you know, is, is this a – should I pay attention to this? And he repeated it kind of with a wink and a nod, which let me know that, look, I'm telling you, we don't play to speak about players not on the team. I would say we're not interested if we weren't interested. Um, so I, I think the message was there there may be something there. I don't know how serious it is, but you you know Costa's salary, by the way, with uh, his, his option and, and some contractual things that happened, his salary is now up to five point eight million. 
he may be a difficult guy to buy out. He may be a difficult guy to move if he's owed that much money. Um, you know, he's found some va- the get Galaxy have found some value in him now in the way they're playing now. Um, I, th- I think, you know, they definitely have to get rid of a DP. Chicharito's back. We know that his contract is already vested. It sounds like like um, Costa's contract has gotten very expensive. I mean, if they need to move a DP or buy a DP down, it sounds like that would be Kevin Cabral. But the Suarez thing sounds like it's generating a little bit more heat again. Is this a guy at 36 next year after the World Cup that wants to, to play another season? We'll see. One thing in talking about how the Galaxy have changed with the, all these midseason acquisitions, um, there was something that you pointed out that you noticed near the end of the game and then I picked up on too. When Chicharito came out in the 88th minute, he handed the armband to, to Ricky Puj. Now, I, I don't know whether he wanted him to put the armband on or whether they were playing telephone. He was supposed to pass it down the row. But he handed it to Ricky. Ricky handed it to Gaston Bergman, who handed it to Sega, who put it on. Now, Chicharito may have wanted Sega to wear it. He, that might have been, he might have been saying, we can't hear them from the press box. He might have been saying, hand this over to Koulibaly. Um, Greg afterwards said he didn't know what was going on with that. He didn't know whether that was the plan. He did not pick a vice captain, so he wasn't really sure what was going on. But it was interesting that, you know, Ricky could have put it on. He's now kind of a team leader. He's one of the big guys. He could have put it on. No one would have said anything. Bergman, he's 30. He's, you know, defensive anchor, a veteran guy. He could have put it on. Nobody would have said anything. But they passed it on to Sega, two guys saying, I don't want to, I, I, I want my teammate to have this. That's a, again, a, if you think back to July, there was that stretch in July where they lost five or six games where Derek Williams called out teammates. We were not on the same page here. We're not playing together as a team. Now you have guys wanting their teammate to be the captain, not wanting to be the captain themselves, wanting their teammate to, to – they're playing together now. Whereas in July, it was a bunch of individuals in Derek Williams' turn. Now it's truly a team, a selfless team. That has a lot to do with, I think, the Galaxy's success as well. Yeah, I mean, up to a certain point, I think you're right. Um, also, I think that Sega probably earned the the armband over more. No, so he was the guy that he was the guy that should have got it. You're right. It's interesting that it went through that process to get there. Well, I don't think the referee was going to let Chicharito run all the way down the field and get handed to Sega as well, right? I mean, there's there's some of that because we know the referee wasn't going to allow that to happen, yeah. right? Um, but I thought no one would said anything if other, either of those two other guys put it on. Yeah, I thought I thought Greg said um, I, Greg said he goes, you know, that's really interesting. He goes, I think it just shows the respect those guys have. For 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 sort of the for Sega and also for the for the you know the captain's armband. I thought it was an interesting little like he didn't know that he didn't see it he didn't care it wasn't one of those things. That's one of those things as a coach you're like you guys handle that that's you like Chicha's our captain and he can hand it to anybody and that's you guys figuring that out that's 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 managing your own locker room right that's that's how well, you get it. And Greg told another story too. The game started so early um, that. Greg was a little bit concerned. Was everyone going to get to the stadium on time? Was everyone going to make it there on time? So he went to the veterans and they had a meeting and he let the veterans make the, the, the call. But, but Greg suggested, look, do we want to stay in a hotel? Do we want to have dinner together on Friday? Do we want to get up and have breakfast together on Saturday morning and then take a bus to the game? And so they spent the night at LA live, the Marriott at LA live for a home game. They have not done that this year. I don't know if they've done it. I don't know when the last time they they bust as a team to a home game, but the veterans stepped up and said, yes, this is a good idea. We want to be together before our first playoff game. We want to arrive at the stadium together. We want to spend the night together thinking about this game. Um, again, the veterans stepping up and saying, this is the way it's going to be. And the contrast to July when in Derek Williams terms, it was a team of a bunch of individuals. That's not what he said. Don't, don't say that though. That's not what he said. He was calling out a specific person and we know who that person is now. Although we had a lot of different guesses. We thought Efrain Alvarez, we thought Julian Araujo and we thought Douglas Costa, who was the guy that he was calling out. It was Douglas Costa who got sat almost in that span while he was getting called out. It was Douglas Costa. That's what I'm saying is, Derek wasn't afraid to call out Douglas Costa. I think Greg knew it and everybody knew it. And then the SKC game happened and he got benched, right? That was the change that happened. Again, there's, I think there's some credit due here because as much as people wanted to panic in the locker room, the locker room was not a separated place, right? And so, yes, it was about calling people out and making people accountable and maybe Douglas Costa wasn't on the same game program yet, right? I mean, certainly it didn't look like he was on the same page as everybody else whenever we saw him but playing. But the, the fact that you had three guesses 
I mean, you yeah, know, that's that's well, kind of damning as well. Well, but, you know? but at the time, the Galaxy were playing poorly, and you're sort of like, why is this happening? And so you're looking at the guys, and Efrain Alvarez was definitely one of the guys who you were like, is he is he's being where he's supposed to be? And he wasn't getting a lot of playing time after that. He also had a little slack in, in yeah. playing time after that. So yeah, I mean, I get it. But I mean, you know, I could tell you that somebody didn't. Okay, so somebody didn't follow the game plan on on Saturday. Who was it? Right. And so you can go back and look at performance. Well, you know, you know who I didn't think maybe followed the game plan as well as probably Raheem Edwards didn't follow the game plan as well as I thought he could have. Right. I didn't. He didn't get in as many dangerous positions. I expect him to. I didn't expect I expected him to make some more interior runs and he didn't. And Nashville did a really good job of shutting those down as well. Right. So, I mean, I can play this game on any game where we say, if you want to call somebody out, I can tell you who I think wasn't following the game plan. We could also go back to Saturday and I could say Douglas Costa in the first half, who was running around a little bit. Right. So I, I think we make it's it's a good observation. And I think uh, as as fans, you can see it. And when Derek Williams chooses to put that in the press. Right. I think it's a good sort of sounding board for us to look off of. Right. But at the same time, I don't know. The things that changed after Derek Williams said all that stuff was also that Ricky Pooch and Gaston Brogman came in and the Galaxy started winning. And so winning solves a lot of those problems as well, right? So are we 100% well, sure of, yeah, of all those yeah, things, you know? Yeah, winning solves a lot of problems, but then where does the winning come from? Yes, those guys arrived and they started winning and it was their talent that helped that. But it's also the the mood around the team. When I was there last, whatever media day was, last Thursday, and I had to sit down with Ricky and one with Gaston, Gaston, um, Ricky, at one point I asked him uh, who was here with him and whether his girlfriend was here. And some players were passing by and they heard me mention girlfriend and they just jumped all over Ricky yep. and were giving him a hard time. Yep. And, uh, you know, it was really funny and Ricky was really enjoying it. And, and uh, you know, Greg Vanny said, yeah, he's in, he's in the middle of everything. He's the butt of jokes and he's the one making jokes. That's a good locker room. Now you talk about, oh, they're winning and that makes it better. But because they're like that, they're winning. You know, it goes both ways. And people will say, well, you know, Victor Vasquez and Sasha Kletchen, they haven't really played the second half of the season. They, they're they having no uh, effect. They're having no impact on the team. Oh, yes, they are. The reason that locker room is like that, the reason the team decided to stay at LA Live, the reason a lot of these things are happening is because of the veteran presence and the mood those guys set in the locker room. So just because Sasha's not on the field, don't think he's not a huge, huge part of this team. That's what, uh, that's what always baffles me with people who are like, oh, well, Sasha's definitely not coming back next year. You know he wants to play next year. He's been he's made that fairly clear that he wants to play one more year, right? And so people are like, well, he can't play for the Galaxy. That's just a waste of money. And it's like, you sit there and 84, go, $84,000? $84,000. I'm like, I'm like Listen, I don't have eighty four thousand dollars. It's not my money, but I'm telling you, at eighty four thousand dollars, you could spend it on a lot of things that that wouldn't be as good as Sasha Kleshin. So, um, you know, if he wanted to come back, I certainly could see that. But I think there's also a good question. I think we've talked about it on the podcast too. Is you're probably not bringing Vasquez and Kleshin back, right? Or you certainly can't bring Vasquez back at the salary that he was at, right? So there's other changes, there's discussions that have to happen. But could you see Vasquez and Kleshin? on the LA Galaxy next year? Yeah, you could. I just don't expect the the money to be the same. I expect Sasha's to stay the same, um, but but probably not Victor's if he was going to stay. By the way, speaking of money, with the addition of Ricky and and and, and Gaston, and, well, Caceres didn't cost that much, but and, and with Chicharito and and uh, Costa's salaries ballooning with the, uh, with the contract extensions being picked up, or options, rather, the Galaxy payroll now is at $27.3 million. That's a franchise record. And it's not even the highest in the league. No. Toronto's at 30, 32.2 million. Which which is is also really interesting, right? At this time, at this place with MLS, is how much money is being sent. Uh, you know, Insigne is making $14 million a year, right? Uh, Shakiri uh, with Chicago is making $8.1 million, right? Uh, then it's Chicha at 7.4, and that's gone up a little bit, All right? three of those above Zlatan. Remember, Zlatan had the record. Yep. So, so Zlatan didn't even have the franchise record anymore. No. So, yeah, so 7.4 for Chicharito. Uh, Bernadeschi also on Toronto, 6.2. You did it, what was it, uh, with Insigne oh. and Bernadeschi? What's the stat? It's it's just over twenty million. Only four teams have payrolls higher than than Toronto is paying those two players. Where did Toronto finish, by the way? Twenty seventh out of twenty eight teams. Yeah, how much they how spent nine hundred and forty eight thousand dollars a point. <laughs> they spent almost a million dollars a point this year. Philadelphia, which has the uh, the second to lowest payroll, and and uh, you know finished tied on points for the supporter shield. That LAFC got it because of the tiebreaker, but. They spent, uh, it's under 200000 I think it was $188,000 a point. Right. That's insane. 
No, it, it is. Uh, by the way, uh, shout out to to Luis for a one dollar super chat. We appreciate that, Luis. Thank you very much. Uh, if you guys want any questions, uh, you can certainly hit us up on the super chat and put those into the show as well. Um, I will say one thing, and I want to be. I think this is important because I think people make too big a deal out of this whole cost per point and things like that. MLS is a horrible indicator for spending a lot of money on and like winning things per point. One is like Toronto is going to get just. Eat, pounded into the sand by how much money they spent, right? And again, it's annualized. These are all annualized. So somebody asked, I think, about Caceres and like $300,000 for 10 games. He didn't get $300,000 for 10 games. He got maybe 100000 Yeah, and, and, maybe, if that, probably right? not. Yeah, it's it's probably right around 100000 because it, it's prorated per game, per 34 games. So well, you annualize that and basically you can figure out what it is. An example I use in the story I wrote is, is you look at someone like Cellini. He came in at a hundred at a million dollars. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed is a little bit more. I think it's 1.075 million but a million dollars was his base salary right he missed he missed the first 14 games so he's actually going to get of that million dollars he's only get going to get 588,000 um when you and, and when you look at guys with multi-year contracts if they have a signing bonus or there's agents fees or whatever else that goes into that he may have a base salary of $200,000 right on a two-year deal so 400,000 right but there's a $50,000 signing bonus that gets divided twenty five thousand each year, even though he gets a a balloon payment at some point. So the value of his contract is two hundred and when it's annualized, it's two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year. He doesn't get two hundred twenty five thousand dollars a year. Um, it's just annualized. That's the way MLS does it. Why? Because they're just looking for another opaque way to hide things. I guess I don't know. It's very difficult to figure out. I mean, in some ways, it equals all the contracts, though, right? Like, if you're able to just annualize all of them, you're able to compare all of them, right? And if not, you might have to figure out a different way to compare them. You and I were talking, and I think we were talking last night, and you called me about some stuff, and I wanted to be like, uh, I you were saying, well, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense on the on the TAM line, right? It was like it was too high for, for TAM. You're talking yeah, about Gareth Bale, right? Yeah. Bale is like $2.3 million, but he's he's not even a DP. He's a TAM player. Right, and he's a TAM player, and everybody's going to freak out and be like, how can Gareth Bale be good? Well, what does the base salary say? The base salary says 1.6, 1. 6, right? 1. 6, and yeah, so, so, so you so guess what? Whenever things don't make sense and you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Just go to the base salary and realize that they're probably using the base salary as the as the um, as the overall uh, salary cap number. And that that's why he finishes. Fixes and, and, under and that's TAM. why Ricky is right at the TAM number. I think it's one point six one two five. Right. So he's there. But his guaranteed is about one point seven. So it's yeah. a, little, a little bit above. And, and perhaps that could even include what we expect the the TAM budget to bump up next year. And so then Ricky gets a raise anytime the TAM budget bumps up. Right. Like it's one of those you you, you might think that is. Um, so, yeah, that was that was good. We got a good uh, question here. And it was actually on my list of things that I wanted to bring up. Uh, Ten dollars super chat from from Angel. Is it Angel or Angel? Um, Angel says, uh, what's up with the booing opinions more specifically with Cabral? So Kevin Cabral comes on in the second half. Now, if you didn't think Kevin Cabral was coming to this game, y'all haven't been like paying attention to any of the games that have been going on. And quite honestly, Kevin Cabral was brought in for one reason and one reason only is to stretch the field and give the LA Galaxy some relief on a counter. It, Greg Vanny knows that Kevin Cabral is not going to score. All right. He almost did. He almost did. Uh, that's fine. He's he almost does a lot of things. Right. But Kevin Cabral comes on to this. And, and I it was it's well known now that that at least in the press box and we were, I think we were joking around, but it's well known that as soon as he comes on the field, we know there's going to be a breakaway. Right. You know that Kevin Cabral is going to get a break. There are no breakaways in almost any game. And then Kevin Cabral comes on and all of a sudden there's two or three breakaways and Kevin Cabral will be leading it out. Um, maybe it's the speed. It's some of his positioning. He does some things really well. That's one of the things. His, his ability to transfer his speed down the field and get into open positions and then have teammates find him. Those things are all happen. The only thing that we know that is a hundred percent for sure is that Cabral is going to screw it up somehow. Now I thought the one pass that he got, that he was trying to come through the middle and trying to make another pass. Nashville did a really good job of closing down. That's not his fault. I know fans want to blame him for everything. That's not his fault. Um, the, the one that he got sort of that left footed weak shot. That's definitely Kevin Cabral's fault. Um, that one for sure. And then I think he had a, a chance from the right side that he chose not to shoot and went to go try to cut it back into a thing. Eh, Yes and no. Kevin Cabral's never going to score from that short angle anyway, so why not try to pass? I don't really care. But that's why Kevin Cabral was brought in. Guess what? If the Galaxy are winning the LAFC game and they need to stretch the field and they're going to they're going to put Kevin Cabral back in. Now, here's the part that baffles me, Kevin. Absolutely baffles me. 
All right. I watch these things from the press box. I don't get to cheer. That's fine. I like having sort of that that calm presence to just observe everything that's going on. They announced Kevin Cabral in his home stadium. A guy who, if you believe that he doesn't have the confidence, Kevin, which I know a lot of people say he doesn't have the confidence. I'm possibly going to say he doesn't have the skill because I just I don't see it. Right. So confidence is one thing. But if you believe he doesn't have the confidence, please tell me in a playoff game you are winning where a second goal would have put everything to bed where you would want to pump up your player as much as you possibly can in order to get the best result. Out. You want Kevin Cabral to think he's the best player in all of the world when he steps out there. Your home fans, and a large portion of them, by the way, decide to boo their own player in a playoff game. Act like you've been there before, LA Galaxy fans. Just act like you've been there before. So. Well, a lot of them haven't, though. It's only yeah, the I, second, I, I, first playoff game at home in six years. And then the booing was even worse when he missed the shot. Which That's it fine. Looked like I'm okay like with the score. I am fine with booing after a bad play. That's completely different. But when you say send a guy into a game, Kevin, Kevin, if you were getting ready to go play for the LA Galaxy, you as you are right now, oh, they should boo. They should boo. <laughs> Greg Vanny calls you up off the bench and he's like, "Hey Baxter, I need a goal." All right, just stretch the field for me. Run down the field. Let's take some pressure off the, our defense. Let's open this space up a little bit. Baxter, we know your long distance running history. We know that you're, you know, 102 years old right now, but you are the guy that's going to go out there. And so they announce your name, Kevin Baxter, and you get booed. Does that make you feel good? No. Okay. So, so they, that, you better be warming those paddles up, though, if they're sending me in to run. <laughs> I'm just saying, it baffles me. By the way, I've heard all the excuses. They're all so poor. Y'all need to look at yourselves in the mirror. I understand your frustration with Kevin Cabral. Greg Vanny understands your frustration with Kevin Cabral. Kevin Cabral understands your frustration with Kevin Cabral. Okay? You're good. Your team is in the playoffs. Did, were, did we not talk on Thursday night how Galaxy fans were doing everything they possibly could? They were like, we're bringing back Hot Dog Girl, right? They, like... Literally, uh, Galaxy Mom went and made sure that Hot Dog Girl was coming. They got her tickets to come to a playoff game. The Hot Dog Girl. They're like, no, you need to come. What did the Galaxy do? Who sang the national anth anthem, Kevin? Malia Emma. Why did they do that? They're unbeaten with Malia Emma as the anthem singer. A good luck charm, right? So the Galaxy are doing everything they can. So Galaxy fans want to go out there and they want to throw a turd into a guy who is, has a fragile state of mind at the absolute best. Just the stupidest thing I've ever seen. But continue on. See what happens whenever he completely gives up. Because it, lucky for you, he didn't completely give up. He ran. He put the ball in. Now, Greg Vanny was ridiculously angry towards the end of the game because the Galaxy didn't know how to run a ball into a corner and put that... He talked about it afterwards, right? Did you see? Uh, Damien... Yeah. I think Damien asked him the question and he goes, Damien, uh, Damien goes, I, Greg, I think you were a little little upset there at the end. What? What? And Greg is like, a little upset. Like, he was like, I was livid. I was... I was. But the Galaxy giving up the ball at the end of the game in a position where basically it takes their, their attacking players who are their first defenders out of plays and therefore it allows Nashville to sort of rush, right? And Nashville got a couple odd man rushes coming back through the center because the Galaxy did a poor job trying to get to the corner. Vanny was livid, right? With that type of thing. Now, Cabral could be better at that. He could run to the corner and sit on the ball, right? Uh, Jovalich could do better. He could run to the corners of the ball. Ricky Pooj, by the way, put a pass into a horrible situation that he could have done better. So I think if you're looking at that whole thing, Kevin Cabral got brought in and did exactly what Greg Vanny wanted him to do in the situation. And people who are going to boo him, listen, I don't expect him to be on this team next year. I don't think Greg Vanny expects him to be on this team next year. I, everybody understands that fans are upset with Kevin Cabral. You're not helping yourself. And that's the crazy thing. It's like, what was it? Um, uh, Aaron Judge getting booed after four strikeouts in, in a World Series. Three or, against uh, yeah, the, playoff uh, game. Yeah, three yeah, against the Cy game. Young Award winner. You know, I mean, it's Cy Young Award winner is supposed to strike you out three times. You know, By the way, Aaron Judge struck out 180 times this year. It wasn't like the first time he struck out. And I, I need to say, Kevin Cabral and I have the same name. We are not related, though. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> Okay, I we just have want the to... same name, but we're not related. But Scott French is related to Kevin Cabral because Scott French is French. French. I don't, I don't know. That was I, I reached for that one. That's okay. It's fine. I'll, I'll uh, handle the humor from here on out. Yeah, it's fine. No, there, there are there. Sometimes there are little children 
who run around and masquerade as Galaxy fans in some of these situations, just play it smart for the rest of the playoffs. The guys who wear white in the LA Galaxy crest are the guys you want to make feel better about themselves. It doesn't matter if they screw up. If you're going to sit there, if Chicharito gets a penalty kick, Kevin, God forbid, LAFC game coming up, Chicharito gets a penalty kick and he goes for a Panenka, right? And he misses it again. Are you going to sit there and boo him? Are you going to try to destroy your captain in one of the most important games that is coming up ever in the history of your club? Is that, is that what you want to do? He's not coming anywhere near a penalty kick, though. He's going to he's going to run the other direction. I think <laughs> I think Greg right. Vanny might tackle you, him if he tries yeah, to take it. Yeah, you think it. Ricky passed the harm band on? He's not passing the ball over. No. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's fine. No, listen, you 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 think and and again, there's uh, the little children in the comments over here um who are like booing's part of the sport. Agree 100%. You don't boo a guy when he comes on to the field. You want to boo him, boo him off the field. I don't care. Boo him after he misses a shot. That's fine. That's related to his performance. But before he comes on the field, you want him to feel like crap? Y'all are crazy. Y'all are nuts, right? That's some Zlatan level stuff that ruined the locker room, all right? So again, Kevin Cabral is not going to be here next year. Almost 100% certain of that. But he is going to be here for the remainder of the LA Galaxy's playoff run, and he's going to play. Y'all should be on Twitter right now telling him what a god king he is, so that way he can get all his confidence and say, Kevin, we know that things haven't gone your way. This, you should be on Twitter right now. I don't know what you're doing in my chat room, right? In Instead of just being on Twitter going, Kevin Cabral, you're the greatest player that ever lived. We know it. We're behind you. You're going to do fine, right? Go against LA Skis. Score a hat trick. We will be there to lift you up on our shoulders whenever it happens, right? That's what should be happening. Or do you guys not get the psychology of how this stuff works? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I've been around for too long, Kevin. You know, maybe, maybe I'm getting I'm the old white guy who's like, oh, man, you know, bat flips. I love bat flips in baseball, by the way, but not a problem. But, well, you know, th this playoff run is kind of broken nicely for the Galaxy in the sense that their first two games are at home. I mean, yes, they'll be at Bank of California, but they don't have to travel. I don't have to travel. I know they did spend the night in a hotel, but they don't have to travel. They don't have to get on a plane. They don't have to go and play in a strange field. You know, if. You talk about going and playing a different field, like you know the the the, the game tonight, the New York uh, City Miami game was at City Field. It was at a baseball stadium, which New York City plays on a different baseball stadium, um, a different field for a home playoff game. If the Galaxy had a second home, it's Bank of California. They they played there eight times in in the last five years, um, and again they don't have to they don't have to leave their neighborhood. Yeah, it's a it's listen, it's advantageous. By the way, we're, we're we are paying attention to Dallas and Minnesota, and I think they're tied yeah, one, in, one. Yeah, in extra time. I yes. want to I want to show the playoff bracket, but I'd like to do it whenever that game is over. So that way I actually know so the bracket can actually be filled out before we're done. So we still got a, well, a little bit the of the reason here. that game's important is because if Minnesota wins, they go to the conference semifinals against Austin in Austin. If Minnesota wins that game, and the Galaxy beat LAFC, guess where the conference final is going to be played? LA Galaxy land. That's yep, I... at, at, they would have three, essentially, well, three games in Southern California, two of them home games. Um, it, they, they cannot host MLS Cup unless Cincinnati comes out of the East. That's yes. the only team they can so, play. So if you're a Galaxy fan, you're rooting for Minnesota to beat Dallas, right? And you're, and you're rooting for Cincinnati to be the dark horse and win the Eastern Conference. This stuff has happened before, by the way. Very, this almost that almost feels very uh, U.S. Open Cup, Kevin, right? Because the Galaxy were uh, were were so lucky with their draw in U.S. Open Cup, and they had all these things that you could do. And it's like, oh, okay, you could you could get this U.S. Open Cup. You can do all. It's like it's lined up for you. If the Galaxy beat LAFC, if Minnesota would somehow get past, it's lined up for the Galaxy. You start to fall into these. You needed some help in the scheduling gods because everything always comes down a little bit to luck in terms of one game playoff games, right? This isn't home and away where it was like, you're going to get two games and you're going to do your best over two games. I like that much better. I don't like these single elimination yeah. games. Well, it, I don't think it proves who's the better the better team. I think it proves that which team went, went, wins on that day and gets a break or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Austin game yesterday, um, Real Salt Lake played the last 37 minutes of regulation, I think it was, and then, tw you know, the, the full 30 minutes of extra time, a man down. They lost a guy to a red card. Um, and they held Austin, the second highest scoring team in, in the conference. Uh, they, they held them to one goal until there was a penalty shot in uh, stoppage time. Real Salt Lake was the better team. They played the better game. They're mm -hmm. eliminated because it went to penalty kicks and there is no second game. Nope. Um, so, it, it, you know, another thing about this playoff, you know, Greg talked about it a lot. The teams at the end of the season that are hot have a better chance than the teams that have been good all season. You know, he's looking at LAFC and Philadelphia and maybe Montreal, though Montreal got hot at the finish. 
Look at baseball. That you know, in the National League, there were three teams with 100 wins over the course of the season. You don't right. get 100 wins in a week. Right. Over the course of the season, they're all gone now. The Dodgers, Atlanta, and, and the New York Mets, they're out. It's Philadelphia and, and San Diego. They didn't get more than 90 wins. They were hot at the right time. The Galaxy is hot at the right time. Six, one, and five over their last 11 or 12 games. They're hot at the right time. You know, I was talking to, to Steve Torello, the LAFC coach, about this, and Greg said – we're in, a, we're in a different situation now. It's a tournament. It's a knockout tournament, one and done. You have to be good on that day. So yeah, Steve Trenello talked about that too. He said it's a different competition that has different rules, and it does. You don't have over t- extra time in a regular season game. You don't have penalty kicks. Now you have all that stuff, uh, and you have to think about that with your substitutions and everything else. So it is, you know, congratulations on the Supporters' Shield, but this is a different competition, as he said, with different rules and different strategies, and the game have to be played a different way. Super interesting. That game coming up, obviously, uh, Bank of California Stadium coming up on Thursday. Now, here's an interesting one, Kevin. Hardly ever get this one. Uh, this game on FS1 and Fox Deportes. Uh, the scheduled TV start time is 7 p.m. The scheduled kickoff is 7 p.m. Oh, it's just like the Premier League. I'll tell you, it's almost like they planned this. Now, do I believe it'll actually kick off exactly at 7 p.m.? I do not. No. Uh, but that's what they're saying right now is at 7 p.m. Also of interest, of course, is the Lakers and Clippers, I think, play at the exact same time at, uh, I was going to say at Staples Center, because that's still that's still where I'm going, but at Crypto.com, um, just down the at road. The crypt. At the uh-huh. Crypt. Um, so that'll be there as well. Uh, by the way, I would love to answer this comment. Where is this one? Um, because I feel like we have a new listener here. Uh, Xavier says, Josh needs to start criticizing the team and stop kissing their butt. Kevin, Ooh. Kevin, Kevin, you and I, I, I didn't are, are we are we butt kissers, Kevin? Have we been? Is this your first podcast, Xavier? Congratulations. Welcome to the show. First time, long time? Jesus. We're butt kickers. We're not. I love kickers. it. You say one thing people don't do. Dis- oh, well, you're just kissing their butt. Yeah. That's why I get yelled at every time I go to training. Yes. Absolutely. That's why. That's oh, why Kevin Acevedo has to listen. That's that, why. Hi, that's Kevin. Why the Galaxy PR staff is listening. Yep. Because they want to light us up if we say anything controversial. Good God. By the way, the reason that Josh mentions the Clipper uh, Laker game isn't because he's a basketball fan. The point is, if you're coming from. Uh, um, uh, from the north, uh, beware of traffic. If yeah, you're coming you from right. any, if you're coming from anywhere around there, Kevin, it's just going to be a cluster. Um, yeah. so yeah, you're going to have to prepare for that. So maybe you want to leave. Let's see, it's Monday at eight forty-five. Um, leave now. Yeah, leave now. But I was going to say, play it safe. Leave now. Leave now. You can you can go uh, and do that. So uh, one of the things I wanted to touch on was the LA Galaxy. They are hosting a watch party. So listen, a very limited number of tickets are going to be available for 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 supporters. We know that that list and all that stuff should be coming out. I imagine in the next day or so. Uh, so you'll find out if you got those, if you applied for those and the supporters group will go and it'll probably be, I'm guessing like 100, 150 people max. Like that's going to be it. You're not going to get any more, right? So uh, watch party uh, is maybe your only place to go watch this game and you can watch it with fellow LA Galaxy fans. It's going to be in Legends Plaza. Uh, let's see. I have the information here. Uh, it is going to be free and open to the public. That includes parking. Lots 10 and 11 will be open for parking. Um, I checked 100%. It will be free. Now, you're not allowed to bring in your own food and beverages, but you are able to bring in your own seating. And in fact, they're encouraging you to bring in your own seating. All right. So that means if you want to sit down in Legends Plaza, you better bring some chairs. Uh, the clear bag policy will also be in effect. So you're going to want to make sure that you take that into effect when you go in. They do have some specials. I think one of them was 12 ounce Modelo's or actually $5, which is not a huge, uh, like ridiculous price for a, a 12 ounce beer. Although normally you can get like, you know, 16 ounce beers at like an actual brewery for, for less than that, or, or maybe right around that. Let's say that. $5 is not bad. So they are at least providing some things. There's a bunch of different little kits that you can do and do that type of stuff. But the watch party is there for you. You can go to Dignity Health Sports Park. You can hang out with fellow LA Galaxy fans at Legends Plaza, which I think is really cool. I'll be watching, and I've said this before, I'll be watching from home because my wife is in Vegas going to Magic Mike probably every single night. I am am here on... She's at a conference, Josh. Yeah, of course she is. That's what I keep keep hearing. Um, So anyway... So so the people that are at the the party, are the Galaxy going to bus over the team? Are they going to bus over from... Because there's probably not enough parking for all the players cars the reason i asked that is because yes what if you're at the watch party and you're watching the game and and it's the galaxy win or whatever would you be able to stick around and then like see the team bus come back or 
Yeah. I mean, we know it goes into that loading dock in the back. Right. So, so it was funny because uh, they were the Galaxy were asking me if I was going, and I was like, I can't. I got babysitter to do there. Like, like, what do I need to do? Sneak in on the Galaxy bus? Like, in order to, I'm like, oh, well, that would probably do it. I'll just bring my kid with me in the back. We'll just sneak right in. No. Um, it was, it was, we were just joking around on that stuff. But bottom line is that there will be supporters buses that go over. We know that, right? And then we know the team will park at Dignity. Usually they park at the team and the whole staff. So probably multiple buses, right? Park at Dignity Health Sports Park and then bus uh, the 12 miles, I believe. Um, yeah. from, from, uh, from the Dignity Health Sports Park over to the Bank of California Stadium. Listen, I mean, w- without getting too crazy into this, the, um, the ability to uh, have this playoff game, I, I would like it to be a Western Conference final, Kevin, because I think that's, that's, the, that's the biggest game you can get between these two, play- two teams, right? If you're ever talking about the biggest game that will ever be played, it'll be when the Galaxy and LAFC meet them meet each other in a Western Conference final to decide who represents the conference to go to MLS Cup. That's not happening. We're in the conference semifinals on this one, right? But this is as big as this game gets um, for right now. This this is the second time these teams have met in the playoffs. The second time they've met in the conference semifinal. The second time they met in the conference semifinal at Bank of California. And the first time it, it was a three to t- it was three two LAFC win in Zlatan's last game. That's also still after five years. That's LAFC's only postseason victory. Yeah, yeah, more supporter shields than uh, than uh, than playoff wins, if I remember correctly. What was that your your crack so, about the some, that was not mine? I would like to share. It was a great share. line, though. I, I heard it. I saw it from Leslie on Twitter, and if you know Leslie, uh, Leslie and I have, have have known each other for a long time, so I feel confident in using this. Uh, she said that the supporter shield is just a coaster without a cup. Um, and to that, that's really that's really good. That, that's beautiful. I don't know if she came up with that or somebody else came up with that, but whoever came up with that. Uh, which I wouldn't be surprised if Leslie came up with it. Is that's beautiful poetry and and everything. That's that poetry is. right there. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So um, I really think that it's going to be uh, a monumental thing. I think it's going to get the whole city riled up. And you know the fact that it happens on Lakers Clippers is a little unfortunate because that game will overshadow some stuff. But the people who care about soccer in Los Angeles aren't going to be paying any attention to the Lakers well, and the Clippers playing right now. You know, we were talking earlier, and you were trying to talk me off the ledge a little bit. I I, I really. Don't get all that worked up about like matchups, you know, like it, it, you know, for example, in baseball, you want to see Matt Scherzer pitch against Freddie Freeman or whatever. And in soccer, you generally don't get those one on one matchups. But I'm kind of geeked out for this game because the Galaxy midfield now is really good. I think the LAFC midfield, you know, Janela and, and Acosta and 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 uh, um, uh, Ely Sanchez may be the best midfield uh, during this season. It may have been the best midfield in MLS. Right. Now you have this new Galaxy midfield going against them. I think that is going to be a terrific matchup. And then you have this new Galaxy defense with Caceres in it. Um, the thing is, the Galaxy, I know you're going to talk about this on Wednesday, but I won't be on the Wednesday show. The Galaxy team is a different team. They're stylistically different. Their culture is a little bit different as far as what the product they put on the field. The players are certainly different. This is uh, LAFC has played the Galaxy 16 times. They've never played this team. This is a totally different team. It acts different. It does everything differently. LAFC has new players. You have Bale and Cellini and a lot of guys they brought in. They spent $10 million at the summer transfer window, by the way, including re-signing uh, Carlos Vela. But they, they play the same way. Yes, there's different personnel. They put, uh, put people in different spots, but they play the same way. So the Galaxy kind of know what to expect. LAFC doesn't. This is a totally different team. It's a, it's such an interesting. I I was said this, and I'll say this on the podcast. I said this before, and I I don't know. I, I feel like this is true. I have never felt like the LA Galaxy. And listen, Vegas is going to totally disagree. Okay, and that's fine. Uh, I've never felt that the Galaxy were at a, as high of a point going in to face LAFC at any match that they ever played. Right, even whenever they Zlatan's first game, you couldn't tell me that the LA Galaxy would have, should have, would have, or should have been heavily favored in that game, right? And if you go in and tell me right now, one, the LA Galaxy were gunning for this game. I think LAFC are disappointed that Nashville didn't b- beat the LA Galaxy because they didn't want to face this this Galaxy side. So well, we talked about finishing the LAFC three five and one in their last nine, the Galaxy six one and five in their last twelve. So they're going in different directions. The one thing that I, I would worry about a little bit if I was a Galaxy fan right. um, is 
Nashville was very conventional. They come up the middle. You talk about the, uh, you know, the, the 14 box right. where they took care of Mukhtar. LAFC doesn't generally attack that way. Yes, Arango gets most of their goals and he comes straight up the middle. He's a center forward, but they really attack from the wings. Right. So having Caceres in the middle with Sega, that's helpful, but LAFC is going to be coming from the wing. So I think this is a game where Araujo and Raheem Edwards, now Raheem Edwards knows LAFC played with them last mm-hmm. year. Uh, the wingers are going to, uh, the outside backs are going to really have to stay home and play more defense than they normally do. We'll see how that affects the Galaxy attack. I don't know that it will because, you know, they have Ricky, uh, you know, to run that show now. But that's a little bit different. You know, Nashville came straight up the middle. LAFC is not going to, and it's going to change the way that the Galaxy are going to have to play defensively. Yeah, um, and, and it's so interesting. Well, you know, the other thing, by the way, I pointed out in the chat room, uh, Nashville just beat, you know, LAFC. <laughs> Uh, and when you look at that and try to figure out those things, you're like, okay, so what, where's everybody at sort of in their, in their mental, mental wise. Right. And you're like Nashville, they did not dominate LAFC. Let's be very crazy. Let's be very clear. Joe Willis stood on his head in order to make sure that LAFC. Didn't. That was the best game I've seen this year by a goalkeeper. It Just really, really, really great game. But the bottom line is Nashville found ways to exploit and get space and score a goal. Right. And Nashville did not find that against the LA galaxy. Maybe they had some chances. Galaxy snuffed those out. Jonathan Bond came up with two good saves, right? So there were some things in that that you were sort of like, okay, you know, there's a little difference there. Um, again, I'll talk about Dax McCarty not being in the center and not trying to match up in the midfield. You needed a good midfield against the LA Galaxy, and you sort of just decided to let Teal Bunbury come down and foul Ricky Pooja every once in a while, although I, I think he was brought in for his offense. I kind of liked it in terms of his physicality. The Galaxy handled the physicality. I said the Galaxy couldn't handle a physical game because that's not how they play. I don't think Nashville was overly physical. Um, certainly looking at the fouls, the Galaxy were the more physical side, which I, d- I did not expect to see ag- against a Nashville team. So, so maybe, maybe that works say- against LAFC. What you're saying is common opponents, if you look at Nashville beat LAFC one to nothing and the Galaxy beat Nashville one to nothing, that Galaxy win this game two to nothing? Yeah, obviously. That's, I mean, okay. easy, easy, easy sort of thing to, to look at. Um uh, the thing. One of the things Christian said, by the way, uh, Josh. Uh, he said, uh, Josh, you didn't mention that the that the watch party is safer for fa- families as well. Yeah, if you have a family, go to the watch party. You're among good people there, right? Although I guarantee there will be at least one guy in like an LAFC jersey who shows up because he couldn't get tickets to the game or something like that. So just just remember that. Uh, that hey, you can go with your family. Yeah, I can't. I, I, I Jake is asleep right as that kicks off, so it works out well for me. I'll put him to bed. And then I'll be on, I'll be a keyboard warrior for everybody in, in order to make it happen. But um, yeah, it'll be uh, I'm really I'm really excited to sort of see this game and, and see how it plays out. And I mean, you know, uh, Herb, by the way, uh, Sugar Daddy Herb, who's uh, who's I don't think is in the chat room right now, but he he messaged me on Twitter and he was like, you know, to me, if the Galaxy lose this game, you know, LAFC are going to say, yeah, we, you can't get it done in the playoffs. Agreed. They're going to say that. Right. And, and the whole day, like what what happens should the Galaxy lose? The bottom line is it's not going to matter unless LAFC wins an MLS Cup. OK, that's the that's the deal there. Now, here's the panic, I think, on the LAFC side. Uh, and I've been talking through some chat rooms. I have some some different things. Here's where I think the panic from the LAFC side is. I don't see this team as not only peaking at the right time, Kevin, but I don't feel like this team without some structural changes is as good as they were at the beginning of last year for next year, right? Like, I feel like there's a little window sort of closing here for LAFC, which is they have a huge amount of depth. They have all these pieces. You talked about Gareth Bale and his salary. What happens to that next year? What spaces does he take up, right? Like, there's there's some questions here, and there's probably some contract questions. That the LAFC, they've been really good at reloading, Kevin, but it feels like the Galaxy in the very last part of the season, the last 10, 11 games, last third of the season, the Galaxy are on this upward trajectory where it's like, you know, you don't have to replace a lot of pieces. And with a youngish core, you sort of have a pretty good setup for next year, regardless of what happens from here on out, right? Well, you know, I've seen a lot of LAFC this year. Obviously, I have to cover both teams. Um, LAFC is extremely deep. They may be the deepest team in uh, MLS history. They outscored opponents 45 to 15 in the second half. They're able to bring starters off the bench against teams, you know, and, and sure enough, uses them very well. However, remember, they had to beat Portland on a goal, and I think it was in stoppage time. They didn't score against Nashville. They only lost two games all, at home all season. Guess what? They lost their last game at home. Right. Um, 
they looked in the beginning and middle of the season, they were literally unbeatable. They don't look that way anymore. They look a little bit tired. They look a little bit worn. Um, they brought in some new players, you know, Boanga and some, uh, you know, Teo. These guys are great players, are designated players. And I talked to John Thornton this week about that. And he said, look, I'm trying to build this team for now and for the future. And when I had a chance to get those players, this is different. The Galaxy had needs. They needed a number six and they needed a, 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 a central 10. midfielder. Yeah. They went and got those. And then Greg has been talking all year about a center back. We right. were a little surprised by Caceres. But the, my point is the Galaxy had a need. They went out and filled that need. LAFC was just looking around and said, we got some designated player spots. These guys are available. We don't need them this year. We got Arango. We got, or, uh, we got uh, uh, you know, Christian. We got uh, – Vela signed for another year. Um, you know, we got a Poku. We're, we're, we got a Gareth Bale. We're set, but they're available. We can get them. We'll have them for when we need them. I think that caused a little bit of a problem because there was a chemistry thing. Now you're adding all these new pieces. The machine is working great, but now you're starting to add new pieces, and these guys need playing time, and it doesn't always work out. I do feel like LAFC is a little bit – they're still a really good team, but they're not the dominant – a machine they were in the middle of the season and it's interesting when you talk to teams that did not win the supporter shield which means mm-hmm. 27 of the 28 teams right they say hey it's a new tournament we're in the playoffs this is you know anyone can win this is great teams that win the, the supporter shield it's not just not lafc it was new england last year but it's definitely lafc right now they say hey this means a lot this was 34 games we were the best team for 34 games well that's great but the best the best team on Thursday will be the one that goes on, and those 34 games don't mean anything. And so it's funny, the teams that didn't win, the 27 teams that didn't win the Supporters Shield, now they're playing to say the playoffs are everything. Right. And the team that won the Supporters Shield said, yeah, even if we lose, we still got this trophy over here. That's because, we, and, and let's be very clear, MLS values an MLS Cup, right? MLS, MLS at its whole, at its core, and don't listen to people who tell you otherwise, MLS at its core values an MLS Cup over a supporter shield. Everybody does. We all know it. You know why? Because it's the first thing that gets brought up whenever there's anybody who's like, well, how good is your team? Well, the Galaxy have, you know, uh, five MLS Cups. You know, it's like, it's like, oh, that's a lot. That's the most in the league. It's like World Series championships, right? Yeah, the the Dodgers are the supporter shield winners. Yeah, the Dodgers got the support. How's that going for Dodgers fans? I'm not trying to rub salt in. I'm just saying, how's that going for you? You're not in the playoffs anymore. And one thing I thought was funny, and I know, you know, if I brought this up with any other C fans, they'd beat me up over it, but so they lose the last game of the season to Nashville. doesn't really matter. They've already won the Supporters' Shield. After the game was over, after they lost, they rolled a red carpet out and had this huge 40-minute over-the-top ceremony welcoming the Supporters' Shield. And my thought watching that was a little bit like, hey, that's great. You know, congratulations. That's a good prize. It's your second one in four years. You know, that's amazing. Only one team in the last decade has won both the Supporters' Shield and the MLS Cup in the same season. That was Toronto. I think you might be, yeah, with Greg Vanny's Toronto team. I think you might be, uh, you might be celebrating a little bit early. You really haven't won the big prize yet. You might. It, it just seemed like we're. It was a premature celebration because there's still a lot of work to do. And they said everybody said that afterwards, right. but they still rolled a red carpet out and celebrated. Two things I want to remind Galaxy fans. Uh, my favorite was Robbie Keane. After the LA Galaxy win the Western Conference in Seattle uh, off of Juninho's goal that bounced in, it's raining in Seattle. They give the the Western Conference trophy to Robbie Keane. Robbie Keane picks it up, says thank you, puts it down, and everybody runs off the field. <laughs> All right, that was that was one. Um, the the other thing I will say as well is uh, that you know this is again this is the game for the LA Galaxy. Greg Vanny said something I thought was so insightful. And I, I was thinking it, but it, sometimes when somebody says it in a certain situation, Kevin, you go like the light bulb goes off. And Greg Vanny said, and you may have already touched on it. He goes, but he said, I'm happy that we played and our guys got a touch of what it was like to be in the playoffs. Because when we go there on Thursday, LAFC hasn't had that this year, right? They don't know. And remember, this is the problem that LAFC has had in the past, which is getting sort of started after being that by getting that by and getting it through right uh the only playoff win they have in the playoffs since they've I, been in the playoffs what the last you know three times i think was against the la galaxy the 5-2 game right 5-2 or 5-3 five, 5-3 three. Five, three? Can't, i can't remember uh lafc won that game right but otherwise they got bounced by seattle i think after that right and then the the last year who'd they get bounced by uh in the playoffs seattle again they went so, up to uh, see, well no a, they didn't make it last year last year they did not make the playoffs oh that's right but they they've been eliminated by by seattle twice you know they've only played two games because of the international break 
and then they came back and played two games, and now they have a 10-day break. They played two games since September 18th, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and we saw what happened with New England last year. By the way, when you talk about the expectations and have you done anything yet, even when they won an MLS Cup, the Galaxy didn't celebrate. Dave Sarakin, I was talking to him the other day, and he said after they won uh, that first uh, Cup, I think in 2011, uh-huh. he said they had a big victory celebration, and they're celebrating the Cup. And they're not celebrating the Supporters' Shield. They're right. celebrating the Cup. Right. Which and, they won in 2011. 2011 was Supporters Shield right. and MLS Cup. So they won both, but they're celebrating the Cup, and there's a big celebration. And Tim Lewicki gathers, uh, you know, the coach and some of the key players together. And his message isn't they expect a good guy, good game, guys, way to go. You made me so proud. His message was we have to win this again next year. If we don't win it, if we don't repeat, which they did, if we don't repeat, that means we've taken a step back. We have to win next year. Yep. That doesn't sound like somebody who's going to celebrate 34 games and, and not really worry about the playoffs. It's, it's just, a, a, again, I think maybe it's a, there's too much focus on this because, quite honestly, LAFC could come out and be perfectly fine and be able to jump on it. and, and, and They have the talent to just dominate. Absolutely do. Um, the whole deal. It just it feels weird. I'm just saying it feels weird right now to sort of for the Galaxy to be in this position. I have always claimed, Kevin, and I think I need to stick by it if I'm going to make this like a Josh rule, right? One of Josh's rules is that uh, in order to win in Los Angeles, you have to have stars and you have to have, uh, you know, wins, right? You have to do both at the same time in order to be this huge draw in L.A. Uh, maybe to your point, uh, 22,000 plus at a first playoff game, a home playoff game, not a sellout. Right, the 12 p.m. game killed a lot of that. I'm of that opinion. That's fine. I thought the crowd that was there was great. It was a really fun game, and the weather was sort of perfect for playoffs too. So it worked really well. But I can understand people not being able to be in the middle. Some people had ASO stuff. Some people couldn't get off work. I saw it in the Discord. I saw it on Twitter. I can usually tell whenever things like start to go downhill by tickets being sort of offered and how it goes. But you know, bottom line is they miss it by about 3,000 people. You know, a full sellout on a Saturday. Um, you know. Maybe maybe that's that sort of goes into this whole, you know, maybe the galaxy are are not as favored in everybody's mind as they think that they should be. Maybe the surge is so late for everybody. You're actually not like comfortable doing being in this position for an L.A. Galaxy fan or for the L.A. Galaxy to be in this this position. If I look at this at what the betting line says right now, LFC are minus 160 and the galaxy are plus 350 in this game. OK, plus. 350. That's a massive underdog. Gigantic underdog. Huge underdog. Hey, so if you know anyone that's at a conference in Las Vegas, have them put some money down. I was good. No, I don't, you know, gotta gotta keep it above board. If she wants to do that, I would suggest that the, perhaps that is the that is the the bet to make, right? If you d- don't spend your rent money, okay? But if you have an extra 100 bucks, laying around perhaps that's a bet to make because the odds are so much in your favor hundred dollars wins you 350 should the galaxy win and there's going to be a winner in this game reminder there's going to be a winner so oh uh, there we go i think i think we're good we've, we've sort of talked about it I, I, i'm still following this this uh it, dallas minnesota game it's in the final minute of extra time so i'm gonna have to, so i'm gonna, gonna, gonna have to put, kicks. i'm gonna have to put up the bracket without knowing who who won this game right we don't know who won the dallas minnesota game as we're getting ready to stop recording at 9 8 p.m on a monday night but i have to stop here we have to but go I, uh, I wonder how this fits in with the galaxy this austin the austin real salt lake game went to penalty kicks it looks like dallas minnesota is going to go to penalty kicks does that mean lafc galaxy go to penalty kicks i mean if they do the galaxy lose right there's no way after seeing the galaxy play ha- take penalty kicks this year that you're sitting there going yeah no problems these guys got it there's th- th- that has to be the one area where you as a as an observer of the team, a fan, a reporter, anybody can't sit there and say, oh, yeah, the Galaxy have it in the bag if they go to penalty. They are I atrocious. Mean, because look, look who LAFC could send the five people they could send Arango, Vela, Bale, um, you know, maybe Cellini do just because of his experience. Elia Sanchez, Kellen Acosta. Kellen Acosta is a great free kick specialist. That would be pretty intense and the Galaxy we can't match that, but the same token, that doesn't mean that they're going to win because you know you got to know those those LAFC guys are going up there. Every one of them really feeling the pressure. First guy misses a kick. What are those fans going to do? Are they going to cheer? Or are they going to give them the, the, the Kevin Cabral treatment? Um, that thing, could, if it went to penalty kicks and LAFC, uh, you know, sent those five guys out there, it could get ugly. It really could. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's again, it's penalty kicks that like it, it shouldn't. The galaxy might as well be England whenever it comes to penalty kicks, right? England versus Germany. That the galaxy might as well be England. They're not going to score them, so don't expect them to. Galaxy have to win this game, it would before it goes to penalty kicks. And I think if you're Greg Vanny, you make moves in order to ensure it doesn't go to penalty kicks. And in fact, you roll the dice to try and win that game before it goes to penalty kicks. If you lose it because you rolled the dice, you sort of understand how aggressive you have to be. Because I would not. And, and I think Greg's smart enough to know this, right? Kevin, you and I would, if you had a chance to do something maybe a little crazy in order to try to win it in, you know, just extra time, do you really want to play the chance card against penalty kicks? Don't you try to, so you try like to win a, it? Like a, like a trick play, like Ted Lasso's trick play. Yeah, or you pull Jonathan Bond, you know, like you do something just crazy and wacky, you wouldn't do that. But like, I'm trying to say maybe you you would move, you know, you have Jovalich and Chichiru to play beside each other and everybody like gas, grasps their chest being like, this is the first time I've ever seen it, except to have it's happened multiple times during the whole year and people just forget, right? It's those types of things. I'm trying to think. Uh, here we, they're going to PKs. I'm almost... Like in my mind, I kind of want to sit here and, and stall for a little bit. Just yep, that way they are know. going to PKs now. They are going to PKs. So we know that should the LA Galaxy uh, come through this next game, they will go to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, the dates for those, I believe, have already been put out. The 20, I think it's the 23rd, the uh, Sunday. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Where is my calendar here? Which? No, not the 23rd. Not the 23rd. The it's after that. Yeah, it's it's yeah, like it's the 30th. So they get they get a 10 day break. Yeah. Yeah. So they so they get a 10 day break, which is kind of interesting to see them being on the front side of the bracket. Um, I didn't love the Saturday at 12 p.m. game, but the Galaxy handled it well. Um, now they get put into a more comfortable, I think, body clock uh, start time at 7 p.m. So we know that one, LA versus LAFC, 7 p.m., uh, FS1 and Fox Deportes. The game that will happen before that will be this Austin game versus Dallas or Minnesota, whoever makes it through, right? And that's a 5 p.m. Pacific time game, ESPN, ESPN, Deportes on that one. Then it goes to conference semifinals. If... Minnesota makes it through and beats Austin. The LA Galaxy would host the conference finals. Otherwise, the Galaxy, I would imagine, if I'm guessing right now, are, it depends. If Dallas beats Minnesota here, I think Dallas beats Austin. I don't know if I had that in my bracket, but as I'm looking at it right now, I was not super impressed with Austin. Um, I, they won. They did okay. RSL was scrappy. They did okay. But those guys went to penalty kicks as well. And, right, and, and RSL Austin needed... A Austin needed a penalty kick in stoppage time to even get there. Yep. So they, yeah. And they're playing at home against real salt Lake. I mean, you know, unless Minnesota pulls this out, the, the, if the galaxy beat LAFC, they got to go to Texas in some way. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, so you're going there. Um, so that's the, that's the game. Should the galaxy get past that? You go to Western conference finals and it's MLS cup, which is on November 5th. I told you, I now expect the LA galaxy to get the MLS cup because I have plans on November 5th. Um, so for sure, they would absolutely make it to an MLS Cup and they wouldn't host and I would have to like try to figure out how to get out of those plans. And then I'd have to be really nice uh, to Kevin Acevedo, who I already made angry earlier in this podcast, to try to get on a charter so that way I could make it to wherever that, that MLS Cup is. So um, Montreal, can, can you leave the country? Are you allowed to leave the country? I think so. I think I can. Uh, I, could I think be I Montreal Saputo. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, do we have any updates? Has anybody actually taken a penalty kick yet? Or are we still in the... Nope, we're still in the. Uh, I'm looking at. Oh man, uh, Dallas uh, dominated the game. In possession shots outshot him nineteen to nineteen to seven. Had nine shots on target, only See, one goal. This is like whenever I get like you sit there and you say, I understand it's the playoffs. This is the type of performance that you can get out of, um, you know, out of the playoffs, which is you dominate. You you absolutely dominate, Kevin, uh, and you don't score, uh, and it's well, one they, game. They had a, 1.66 expected goals against 0.28, and that game ended 1-1. And it's 1-1, yeah. Uh, all right, just about getting to kicks, says the, the chat room. I feel like this is going to be... Like, this takes way longer than people, like, realize that it takes. And I'm almost wondering, maybe we should, like, let it go down. I don't know. Uh, well, we could, we could do play-by-play. -play. But we can't, because that would be a violation of MLS standards and protocols, right? And and trust me, whenever I played the LA Galaxy's hype video, I got I got copyrighted. Um, and which is always nice. Um, so Copy, yeah, copy writ. You got copy writ. I, I got copied copy ridded, um, copy on that. Ridded. So it's, it's like all these little things are, are sort of going on. All right. Loons won the coin toss. Guess what? Cliffhanger, Kevin. I got, I'm going to go. We, we're not going to go. Yeah. We're not going to hang um, on. I refuse. So to. I got it on fat mob right here. Good job. Good job. Um, everybody's like, come on, please stay. The chat room's like, please stay. Really? Uh, are they? Yes, they are. I don't. 
I, I, I like to, I like, I, I called a lot of them little children earlier, so maybe I should be nice. Um, although I don't really feel bad about that. It's not like I'm going to lose sleep over that. Um, you know, maybe they could find another galaxy player to boo. Um, let's see. Okay. <laughs> shoot out goal. Okay. The first looks like the first one was a goal. I don't know who yet. Oh, good job. Shoot out goal. Reynoso scored. Okay. So Minnesota's up one, nothing now. Uh, Reynoso. All right. Yeah. Good. The chat room is just a little bit behind as, as I would expect one, nothing. Um, so Minnesota. Reynoso also scored the goal in the game. Okay. 53rd minute. So it's one, nothing Minnesota. Yes. Yes. Wow, this could this would be a big upset, and then now you wonder about the brackets. Remember, we were talking about whether why isn't one playing seven? Why isn't LAFC playing the lowest seeded team? They should. They then should play six if if Minnesota gets through. But that's not how it is. We know LAFC right. is going to play has to play the four, which sounds I quite honestly, if I'm LAFC, I'm livid about that. Yeah, because they would be would they be playing Minnesota? They would be playing Minnesota because they're the lowest seeded team, still surviving. Who would you rather play if you're LAFC? You would rather play Minnesota. I'm telling you right now, I would rather play Minnesota than Dallas. Okay, now, now, uh, okay, Dallas it's one one. Apparently, just yeah, Hara. Just, okay, just tied it up. But you know, LA. I mean, I don't think the league set this up. I think it's unfair to suggest that. But this is what the league wanted. The league. Wanted oh, everybody's ex- everybody's Although ecstatic. Although they, they they probably would have, like you said, liked it if it had been the conference final. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that would have been much preferred. That's why you can't say that they have it like set up or that it's fixed or anything like that. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, I mean, okay, here's what's going to happen in the next two shots. Somebody's going to miss or there's going to be a save. There's no way right, these, you're there's, good at this. There's no way these are going to go to go five, five. Oh, it was a save. We'll trap shot. And there was a save by the Dallas goalkeeper. All right. Save. So, Here we go. That, Locked. I just told you that before I knew that I just, was happening. I just, I know. I, I read you the play by play. That's where you found that out. That, yeah, was, I'm sure. Will trap sure. got stopped. Got got blocked so okay now advantage now dallas. dallas with the ch- yes and dallas can go ahead yes yeah i mean you know again this is these are the playoffs you expect that the two and the three spots are going to be where you're going to miss so for the la galaxy they're going to make the first one if they get into pks okay the, the, absolutely the first one goes in all right chicharito takes guys? it chicharito takes fi- the first oh, one no 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 it's it's costa yovlet pooch Oh, Sebastian, at, at, Sebastian Legette is taking this for Dallas. What ooh, do you think? Do you ooh. think uh, he's good? He makes this. That's easy. Yes, oh, they're, they're yeah. already telling me it's it's the, it was a goal. So there you go. Goal. Um, yes. Yeah, it was a goal. Becky G is very happy with that. Yeah. Dallas yeah. up to one. I'm, I'm glad. But, you know, it, you, you could see um, uh, Greg making those changes. He took uh, Chicharito in the 88th minute and brought in Jovalich. I think that was partly to guard against the possibility that it could have gone to penalty kicks. Um, I, I just wonder, you know, the other guy that you'd really want, that I would personally, if you could pick five off the bench and send them in, you'd want Sasha in there, but do you put Sasha in? Sasha, Victor, I'd take, Puj could take one for me. I, I like his, his Costa. demeanor. Costa, I would allow to take, so I only need one more, right? I mean, if you're like, if you're, if it's all the same, would you let Jovalich take one? Uh, okay, two, the, two. Uh, Minnesota just scored, yeah. Yeah, but Minnesota's first, so still advantage Dallas, yes. right? Yes. You know, you know who I would put in there? Who? Kevin Cabral as the fifth guy, the guy that decided. It's talk about rolling the dice. Talk about rolling uh, no. the dice. No, he's horrible. Hero, he's, hero or goat. It's he, just all in. He is horrible. I, I mean, listen, I it's 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 Greg Gray says, you know what, Kevin? The whole season's on you, buddy. You're yeah. my guy. What about yeah, Mark Delgado or Gaston Brugman? That's a good one. All right, goal, goal okay, for well, Dallas. Hedges. Okay. Scored. Okay. So now th- uh, it's two, three Dallas. They're even through the third position. All right. Or they're 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 through the it's third three, position. Two. Yeah. Yeah. And Dallas three, is up two, by one. Yeah. Three two Dallas through the third position. That's what I was trying right, to say. Right. Dallas has not missed yet. Right. Um. No. Kevin Cabral's whole. No. Listen. I I really like Kevin Cabral as a kid. He's he's super cool. I really like him. I love how he stretches the field. I love the speed. I love a lot of his game. I like whenever he plays with a little bit of confidence and he does like all these all these flares and he touches the ball. Like he, there's, there's a goal. Okay. So so Minnesota scored. No, so it's three three. But three three advantage. Yeah, through the third and a half position here. That was Benitez scored that one. Okay. So three three. But no, I mean Cabral has a lot of those. Those those talents that you would do, and listen, people were like saying, "Oh, they didn't scout him." He was scoring in the French league. He scored. He scored what, goals. What, how 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 is Bond on penalty kicks? 
Have we seen much of him? I he think almost Kirk blocked one. Good. He almost blocked one. This that one time he almost got it. I forget which one it was, but he got like his hand to it and it just went up. So those are. I never worry about goalkeepers in unless your name is Nick Romando, right? I w- I've never seen a goalkeeper who I'm like, oh, this guy just stops penalty kicks. Okay, there's a goal Ferreira. They, oh, they, Jesus Ferreira shooting fourth. Okay, so so it so is now a uh, four three. Right. So now if Minnesota or, misses this, yes. All right. So four three. So Minnesota has to make this in order to extend. We are now in Correct. four. We are now in uh, in fourth fifth round. Fifth, fifth round. So fifth this is round. It. start of the fifth round. Right. Okay. This is this is it. This is it, folks. It's coming down to this. this All right. Here comes Kevin Kevin Cabral stepping up for Minnesota United. Just, again, I like Kevin Cabral in a lot of ways. I don't. I, I understand the hate because he can't finish to save his life. I, I love his hair. He has the coolest hair in the league. He's got far. he's got a cool demeanor. Everybody likes him. He's one of those guys. Giovanni Dos Santos and Jonathan Dos Santos were widely loved in the locker room. I love that people think that just because a guy isn't that good or that he has some problems that people don't like him. That's not the case. Uh right here we go four three for Dallas Minnesota somebody stepping up I don't know who it is uh, wait a minute here it comes goal Garcia scored so now four so now four. it comes down to this fa- final kick FC Dallas with a chance to advance they have to if they have to make it in order to advance otherwise it'll allow Minnesota well, back Minnesota into this. Ma- Minnesota made it now it's Dallas's turn Garcia yeah I know scored for Minnesota that's, that's so what I'm saying Dallas, Dallas has to make oh, it you're right or and and well, the Minnesota keeper whoever that is at yeah. this point I don't know. So he you're, to stop it. you're all if Dallas makes this, then they win. And if they don't, it extends it. All right. So, um, but it's yeah, St. Clair, St. Clair in goal for Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. Dane St. Clair is a, a really good goalkeeper. I really like him. Let's see. So uh, we have Ferreira, Hedges, Leggett, and, and Hara scored. Okay. So I think, I think Minnesota blocks here. I think I'm going to go with, a, I'm going to go with this extends. This ain't, this ain't somebody. There's always two misses. It's always two. We got Reynoso, Ariaga, and Benitez that scored for Minnesota. Will Trap missed, was saved. So now we don't know who's coming up here for Minnesota in this last kick. Panenka, goal, FC Dallas. FC, who was it? Uh, Dallas wins five four. Dallas goes on. All right, there you go. Uh, yeah, th- everybody's asking if you're going to get this whenever you go to uh, your the podcast. Yeah, I'm not editing the podcast, so this is you, the people there will be like, man, I already heard this. You can fast forward through that. I don't care. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so if we go back to our bracket, which will not be updated, but we can at least talk about it, right? It's going to be Austin versus Dallas in the bottom half of the bracket. So that's two versus three. It's LA Galaxy uh, going up against LAFC. That's one versus four. Over on the other side, again, you're rooting for Cincinnati. Um, let's see. At four, this means, by the way, with Dallas winning, that the LA Galaxy cannot host a conference finals. Um, if it goes, they cannot through. host another game on, in the conference. By it, the way, it was uh, Alan Velasco who scored the winning goal. The okay. Kick. Okay. Good. Um, so that means the LA Galaxy will go on the road for the conference finals should they get through, and it'll either be to Austin or to Dallas. If they're going it'll to Texas, the, they're going to Texas. It is. It is as you look at the bracket right now in the Western Conference: LA versus Texas. L.A. versus Texas. That's what's going on. And that, that would game would be November 4th, which means you would be able to participate in early voting. You could vote for Beto against that's, that's, in the race for governor. That's right. Isn't November 4th the uh, the MLS Cup? That's the MLS Cup, isn't it? Oh, is yes. it? Oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah okay. Don't You're get right. too far it's, ahead of yourself. November yeah, 4th. Yeah, it's the is. day before Halloween. November, isn't it November 5th, the the um, the MLS Cup? It On Saturday. It's either Saturday or Sunday. It's 5th or 6th. It's the fifth. I think you might be. I think you might be right because yeah. they have to have a week before. Uh, yeah. They have to give players a week before they report to yeah. World Cup camp, which for the U.S. opens on the thirteenth or the fifteenth. Okay. So, so that's where you go now. If you're rooting for the chance for the LA Galaxy to host host the MLS Cup, your only chance is Cincinnati. So you're looking at the one versus five, Philadelphia hosting Cincinnati. You want Cincinnati to win that game. Cincinnati, you are a Pat Noonan and a Dom Kinnear guy. You are fans of theirs, former LA Galaxy guys. Uh, Which you should be there. anyways. Yeah. You should yeah. be anyways. So you're a fan of Cincinnati right now. So go out, buy their jerseys, be supporters, and hopefully they'll end up here, and then you can burn that jersey right in front of them. Uh, Montreal and New York City. Uh, thank God Montreal is in there. We don't have to watch another travesty on a freaking baseball stadium. Somebody, except, not, even the ba- not even the real baseball stadium. Uh, yeah. uh, they, uh, they borrowed one. 
they did. It's not even their baseball stadium. It's something else. Yeah. Um, but if you look at it, Philadelphia, uh, if they got through there, could possibly play another game at New York City. So that's so you're rooting for Montreal to get through. Um, and I think a lot of people have uh, have Montreal as, as possibly the winners out of the Eastern Conference. Again, you could say dark horse, but a lot of people are like, no, maybe it's them. So that's where we sit. That's where we're at. The LA Galaxy heading against LAFC won't get too ahead of ourselves. Again, a scheduling change Wednesday night, live 8 p.m. Myself and Miss Sophie Nicolau getting you ready for LA Galaxy headed off to LAFC in El Trafico playoff edition part two. Um, so that should be. Very interesting game. You know, Seven- Sophie asked. Sophie gets the best. I, I, Sophie gets the best answers to her questions post game. You, it's you can say it. Like I was answer. Yeah, but I always feel like it's a weird question. Like it's a question I never would have asked, right? And it's not like it's just not my style. However, it is, and I shouldn't say weird. Sophie knows I love her. It's fine. But like, it's like always this question. She's like, "Oh, Chicharito, did you have fun out there?" And I'm like, "You're gonna ask a professional athlete if you? Oh, I'm so glad that you asked. I had so much fun." Yeah, I, and, and yeah, he would. He went nuts with that answer. I've told Sophie before. Sometimes I will ask a total off the wall question. Just be on the hope that it will elicit some bizarre answer, um, and, and I'll do that, you know, frequently just to try to get a rise out of someone, just to make my story a little more interesting. But when Sophie starts to ask a question, a lot of times I'm like, "Where is she going with it? What, what is she going for? What's the point of this question?" And then the answer is, uh, and Sophie and I have talked about this, and, and and I don't mean it in a derogatory way at all. It's pray I'm praising her, right? And then the answer she gets. Just amazing. just amazing. Yeah. Go on YouTube, just, by the way. If you go on YouTube, we have that full thing. And Sophie asked the question. And Chicha talks about having fun. And it's like, oh, man, that's like a whole story you could write. By the way, uh, to to wrap up, my whole wife is on a Vegas vacation that she's claiming as a conference. Uh, here is the text I just got. Hey, FaceTime whenever you're done. My room is bigger than our old apartment. I have a foyer. So not only is she going to Magic Mike probably every single night, but her room has a, has an entryway, an entry place to sit before you get into the room, the foyer, of course. Why Why wouldn't? It probably has a bidet, too. There's all, probably all sorts of awesome things that she gets to do without me, and I'm, I get to stay here and watch our son. That's great. That's great. I hope you're having fun, honey. Enjoy that trip. <laughs> Enjoy that conference that you have to go to in Las Vegas. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Is, is she, does she listen to the pod? No, of course not. That's oh. why I can say all these things. Yeah, it's fine. All right. Uh, anything else? You good? We're good. We need to get out of here. I got stuff to do. You got stuff to do. If you're looking well, for Mr. You got a baby to go check on. He's sleeping. I just, I've been checking on him. Uh, if you're looking for Mr. Kevin Baxter on Twitter, it's at KBaxter11. Head on over to LATimes.com. That's where you can find all this stuff. He has his wonderful newsletter that will be coming out talking about salaries and a whole bunch of stuff, I'm sure, uh, coming out tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe to that, LATimes.com. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Guessman, J G U E S M A N, and of course at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over, of course, to cornerofthegalaxy.com. We thank you so much for joining us. We will get you back on Wednesday night, 8 p.m., get you ready for El Trafico. It's going to be a good one. All right, for Mr. Kevin, the Panda Baxter, I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening, you've been watching to Corner of the Galaxy from the box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo. And on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.